clear lecture, but don't worry, I keep doing that in the game. So, Sine, uh, so far, we, we, we wrote some content in this file up here. Let's say if you name it lab1-4, right, or lab1-3 on your computer. Uh, IRB-R is something you guys try to remember. IRB-R. There's no need to remember. That. Just type it when you need to load the file. And we want the current file. And so just it's just the lecture file here in this case. Okay? You are able to do that already, Sine. So I just want to point out that you have no problem running it here. And in this case, it's the person file. So I am able to call the, write the word person is understood here. Okay? And now then your question is, the local variables only exist in this file. I cannot use it. I cannot use it, right? It's undefined. Can you, uh, Ian? Can you ask question to me so I can answer? What's uh, what's the question? I think you. What Ian is trying to ask is why is you know is it you type IRB here and it doesn't make sense? Yeah. yeah. You see, I can talk and see, listen to ten people at the same time. But, uh, but then, you know, I really just, just want everyone to try to focus on their, uh, the screen here. When, uh, Ian, when we use IRB here, is the, this is the regular terminal. We call it a terminal, right? You only learn how to use Ruby. <laughs> this is listing files, running one file, or IRB is to load the file into the terminal. When you are in terminal here, everything you type here is uh, uh, is Ruby code. Okay, so you don't want to type IRB again. If you want to load the file again, please type exit and then run it again. Okay, and then you notice that I tend to clear it. Control L, clear the screen. It looks nicer, right? We okay there? So my I'm I'm addressing Tan's good question is. I don't want to type line 30 again, right? I can do person.new Alex and 26, but I don't want to do that again. I want next every time I can do it, you know, easily. Right? So the way to do it is that you can start using instance variable for these guys. Okay? Or if already up here you use Alex in some cases, you have some, uh, you know, example with Alex dot name, this kind of thing. So now you do, you can actually just create another instance variable and assign it to Alex. And now you can do reload the file and Alex is is that instance variable. Okay. So Ian. If I want to have Bob in the ins down here, okay? Right now is nothing. Can you help me write something up here so that I can have Bob at the bottom? Bob. Yeah. I want to define at Bob. So down here, for example, check it again, okay? At Alex, you see there's a value here. There's a value here. So if I do this, why is it nil? Up here, I want to define Bob in line 37 so I can have it down here, okay? So, what should I write here? Bob. Right, Bob. Okay, so name. So, I have Alex. I have Bob. I want to have Carrie down here. How do I do that? So, I do Carrie. Okay, equal what? Carrie. So, 
in this case, for example, I did not have this carry up here. All right, so what do I do down here? Okay, excellent. Define what carry is, and how do I do that? Uh, we just call person dot new. Okay, so can you help me? How do I do carry here? Per, per. Yes. Dot. New. What's the argument? Carry. What's the second argument? What What is Carrie's age? Okay, it can be anything really. Okay. So this is how you define these variables. What I'm doing this with this line 35 is the same as taking this thing. Sorry about that. Uh, taking this up there and then put here. Okay. I'm just, you know, I'm just too lazy to type the word Alex, or I'm just reusing my variable, so. So from now on, you can try to use instance variable if you like to reuse it. I like to use local variable, and only when I really need to use instance variable, I use it. Okay? Question about this. To do the uh, IRB. Yeah. What is the actual, what is the purpose of the function behind it? You're doing it internal. What is the purpose? Yeah. Like, why would you want to do it this way, just to run the code? Uh-huh. run that particular section instead of the whole thing? Okay. Good question. Then. I'm trying to understand it better. Uh, if I just do Ruby, yeah. right, and then lecture for one for here, it's good. Click here. That's fine. But after I run the file, I can not do anything else. Right? And then so any experiment I have I do, I have to put it in here. So do you know this is alex.name, etc. But every time you have to go back and forth. You guys see what I'm doing with it if I need to experiment, I have to go back and forth. However, okay. If I run IRB and I load the file, okay, I now can see first what Alex is. I can just type it. I look at it and I decide what I want to look into. So I can type Alex dot first name, right, and I can see what it is. So IRB is extremely powerful, and it's in addition you can see all these colors if you set it up, right. So you don't even have to use puts or anything because IRB, when you type anything, it will try to print what it is for you, okay? If not, in some files, it's good enough, right, just to run the entire thing. But sometimes you want to do more, you experiment, right? When you do your homework, after your homework is finished, then you can just run, you know, all oh, that, blah, blah, and make it work, okay? So with IRB, you only need to rerun IRB if you cheat. Change the file above, but you can always add more tests, uh, like printing, you know, extra things. But with Ruby, every time you change any, uh, you want to test printing anything else, not changing the class. You're just printing things. You have to keep rerunning right. Ruby. Okay, that is just a little bit more convenient. Yeah. Okay, so we gave it a try. Uh, it's still challenging, obviously, uh, but we'll give it a try that I say, I'm going to try to do it with you, and of course at a faster speed. Milestone one. This is how you would do it. Go to your lab, create a file, right? What is your file name? All right, I already did it here, right? Lab one, three A, and then I'm going to, you can copy this into your VS Code. So, I copy this. No, I don't need to copy too much. I only need to copy what's enough and then I copy the rest afterwards. So I'm not sure what's going on here. Uh, I think because it's locked from editing, so I, I can't you know, select it with a cursor. It's okay. Uh, so I only copy just that, right? The whole point is trying to understand line by line. So I could do like, hmm, this is too much code. So I'm just gonna try, maybe comment out, and then I run it. Right? If not, I can keep the whole thing here. 
and when I see errors, I will just react, uh, you know, respond accordingly. So I'm gonna run, go to the lab folder, make sure it's the same folder, right? Lab folder, and if I try running lab one, that's three IB. What happens here? When you get started, you said, oh, line fifteen. Wrong number of arguments, right? Line fifteen here. I, I get two, but I expected zero. It means, okay, now I start to understand that if you call flower.new, you need to pass in two arguments. So I, now I've learned that I need to implement this. When you do the lab, you're like, I'm not sure. How is initialized, you know, working in such? So I had the Slack channel just now, uh, and I gave us the screenshot. I think it would be better if I give you the screenshot of the earlier version, but right? this is the final version. But doesn't matter, we make do with what we have. This is the initialized method. And I, I'm reminded that this is how I handle more than one, one, two, three, you know. So not new, Alex26, very similar to, uh, to flower new roses red, right? So I'm like, okay, I could do that, initialize. Instead of first name and age, I'm gonna do name and what? Color. So I, and in lecture, I learned something about attributes. These guys are the instance variables, but they are the attributes in the class. So I start to do this, right? And I start to pick up the speed. I feel a little confident now. I run this now. Hey, look, the error goes away. Undefined method price equal. Now I learned that I'm going to implement the method price equal, right? And then it also expects that, you know, let's say if I only do this, right, and I run this. It will say wrong number of arguments. I have price equal 10, so you need to put some value in there. So I put the value in here, but now I know that it's a writer, so price equal value. Right? And that's the lab, it, it starts to make sense in here. But at this point, I'm going to switch to IRB because I can look into my things a little bit better. Right? IRB lab one. Uh, 3a so I now I realize the first difficulty is that I have to retype this my flower thing when I first do it I don't mind I copy and paste or I type it and then every time I make changes I might want to use my instance variable so I my flower I can reuse it but if I say my flower dot price because I just set it it doesn't work so I'm like undefined find method price Okay, now I learned that I need a price reader and I just return price. Right? But now you need to exit and reload, right? And I'm sick of typing the my flower thing again, so I'm just gonna do that. Okay? And so automatically I have my flower. It's already set to be price 10. I'm testing again, price is now increase because it's on uh, International Women's Day so now price is 20 and I can start playing with it so far so good even though I'm picking up the speed I talk faster but I hope things still make sense your flower now is accessible here at the price 11 I can even test this my power you know the price is even 30 or I increase it by you know 100% so my flower, your flower is your flower dot price. I can even do this, right? Times two. So now my price in increase. And again, you don't have to print anything. You can start to see that you know you just type the the, the, the object and Ruby will tell you what it is. Okay? So I have price and maybe I can have name. So define a class that take name and color, write 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 the method that set price. So I did exactly that. I did even an extra task here because without it, it's hard for me to test. So then I go back to my lab and I feel a little good that add your own test here. Oh, I see. So in this case, add my own test. I can be creative here, right? I actually, I'm just copying some, some of the stuff I did down there. Of course, don't copy, just, just type. It's not a big problem, right? You set it to 20 and now, you know, uh, Price should be 20. You can even do some, something like that. And then you uh, my flower, not price, and you print it. 
you need to add some, some more tests, right? And this is only possible because you just implemented a reader. Okay, so be more creative with the test, and I have some tests here, you know, multiply it. By the way, you can do my, uh, your flower. This is just a bit extra, dot price. You can add the price by 20 by doing that, right? Plus equal is what? It's the same as taking this and add itself, right? Plus, let's say 100, right? So instead of doing A equals A plus something, it's very common we do plus equal, okay? So, uh, or, you know, this is just now put your flower, um, price should be your flower, what do you think the value should be? Uh, this is price, yeah. What do, what do you think this value will be? What? 111. There's a reason I add 100, right? It looks pretty now. And so you feel like you're done with the task, you can go back to Ruby and you feel you print it out. It looks nice. So you pretty much implement and test it, but that's it. Well, next, this is something I did not teach, but it's in the lab. It says you can open the class again and write something to it. You could go in here and write the, word, uh, the method two sentence. And you feel like, oh, it's, a, it's nice, but down here is the code of my first task. Uh, I don't like it. Okay, it's fine, fine, fine. Let's go down here. Let's say, right? Oops. Task two, right? Bam. And then down here, then you just say class flower. It has everything that you already had up here. You can just add extra stuff. Okay? So then I can copy this, in fact. Right, I paste down here, and this time maybe I want to print it. So remember the the print statement. I'm gonna do puts like that if I want. Right, puts puts. Oh, the open thing here is a bit weird. You have to escape it. Okay, so escape it so you don't have the quotation mark in it. Uh, so. Mm, I think it looks okay. Let me, you know, run Ruby again. All right, so this is your task two, right? Well, I didn't have the thing at the top, so it doesn't look nice. So task one, you can do that, but here, I'm starting my task two here, and then I can implement two sentences, right? On two sentences. And, and here is time for IRB again, because, you know, maybe I can try uh, ABC. So two sentences should be roses are red, Two sentences should be violets are blue, so uh, who can help me with this? Stan? Uh, let's see, we define sentence, uh, so open parentheses. Uh -huh. um, open uh, quotation you mean, open quote? Yes, yeah, excuse okay. me, quotes, hash, okay. uh, curly bracket, uh -huh. and uh, at type. What is it? At type. Type? Up here, do we call it name or type? Or name, excuse me. Okay. Type, sorry. So name, like that? Yes. Okay, and then? Um, R. R. And then hash. Okay. At curly. curly, okay, at? Right at curly. Uh, all right. And there are many ways to test this. You can start testing by using your flower, my flower. You can be like, you know, puts, uh, what is it? Flower, uh, you can test the same thing here. I'm just a bit more flexible here. Flower new, I have now. Give me another flower type. Yeah, tulips, right? And maybe the price is like, you know, zero. Uh, and then you do two sentence. Oh no, this is not the price. Color is red. Huh? Purple, right? And then you can even do two sentence Right? So these two sentences now should be what? It should be the same color as now these two lips are purple. Right? So two lips are purple. So for example, this is another way for you to test it. Okay? And of course you maybe yeah, or you can say two should be two lips 
r purple and then equal and then you this should be the string that look like that so I'm gonna test it okay so when I show you guys I try to write things in different ways so when you run it we all can learn a little bit from it so this should be two lips of purple and when then it's it really say two lips of purple it means my method is doing what I expect it to do you feeling good about just like you know I come up with example like this on the fly you can copy and paste in and create another test uh, you don't have to feel bad about it for example um, what another flower do we have you know maybe maybe random is nothing I don't know if you, you feel like you want to break it and so then we'll be like random or nothing right and then things will start falling into place like okay it's still doing what I want okay so as you try and then this get a little complicated can you uh, maybe give me a thumbs up if you already did this task compare 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 whoa let's see compare I am now copy and paste this again all right now help me doing it together okay so one more time uh, this time I'm going to whoa what's that uh, what's that puts oh Sorry, I'm adding puts to the front, right? Like this, and then the, to the back, okay? Oh, it's magic. Uh, so then I will do, you know, I'm, I just insert that thing front and back, and now I'm gonna implement the compare method. Now here's another approach. I'm gonna call the method before I even write it. Why not, right? So uh, flower, now if I say my flower, dot compare uh, your flower so remember the flower up there thing it what what should it return hey I am cheaper right so again hey uh, I am cheaper I'm gonna say it should be the same as this guy okay if I run it right now what do you think will happen it will say an error why you plus nothing it will say uh, undefined local matter. Oh, oh, my flower. Why? It's now at all over the place. All right, at. At my flower. At uh, yeah. Okay. Let's try again. Line sixty-seven. That's good. Try again. All right. You try to do at. You try to add nil because you don't write any code, so it returns nil. <coughs> Compare returns nil. Even though it's, it's right, you have compare and one argument. Down here, compare and one argument. But it returns nil, so you're doing a string plus nil. Yeah? So if it's nil, I want to basically make it work. I want to make the code compile first. So, something. I want it to return a string. So if I run it again, I am cheaper is something. All right, now I really want this something to be I am cheaper, okay? Obviously, I can make it work like, hey, I am cheaper. Play with it. Be really, you know, comfortable taking baby step here. My method looks good. But then I will go on and test it again, right? I compare your flower with my flower. Like this. Oh. I compare this, and it should be, yep, I am more expensive. So I copy this. And I say, yep, I'm more expensive, should be equal to, I'm not comparing, asking Ruby to compare, I'm asking my eyes to compare, okay? But if I run it right now, uh-oh, your flower, one more thing, your flower here should be instance variable now, okay, my flower should be instance variable now, and then I run this. This is not good. I need it to be flexible enough to handle two cases. Are we still following? So I need this method to be smarter than that. But I'm showing you how I can take really baby step. I make sure I write a correct method. I make sure I write a method with the correct number of arguments. I make sure that I write a method that returns a string. Now I make sure the method returns the right string. 
Okay, how do I return the right string? If, all right, if I'm a flower, right? What is the reader for my price? Price, price the reader, right? You can also call out price. Uh, oh yeah, you don't have the reader price, not yet. So, ah, here, 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 here. You have this reader price. Okay, so I can just call price. No need add price, right? Right? Is greater than, greater than what? Another flower, what do you think, uh, Oscar? Another flower, the price of that flower. Do you do like this, another flower's price? That would be too much English, right? That would be like complete English and Ruby is not English. Uh, so this looks understandable. Yeah? I don't need to do anything here with my flower the price because I am inside my flower as in the first one. So remember we did have the method price here, it's just we're not showing you, right? This was this was you know coded up there, right? You know, you tell yourself like you know, scroll up, you know, right? But obviously don't do this because this opened a new price method and then it overrides the previous one. Alright, so price and then when my price is higher than another price, what should I say? I say, yep, I'm more expensive, oops, like this, right? And then here I say else, I say, yep, I'm cheaper, correct? And let's try this, hey, I'm cheaper, yep, I'm more expensive. And for some of you, you may not be happy with this. You actually want to challenge this code a little bit more. How do you challenge it? You compare your flower with your flower, or my flower with my flower. What is this going to do? Sine, when I'm comparing my flower with my flower, what do you think I should display? Yeah, so when I, you know, this is just designing, okay? If I ask you, my flower compare with my flower, which one is more expensive? What English sentence should we say? Yeah, so look, if I, here, if I say my flower compare with your flower, and my flower is cheaper, I say, hey, I am cheaper. I want you to come over and buy my flowers. If you know, if my flower is more expensive, then the compare and say, "Yep, I am more expensive." So let's use the same personality. And now I say, "My flower compare with your flower, and the price is the same." Yeah. What would you say? No, just say something with personality. Um, it's the same. All right, yo, we are equal, right? Something that is like the same tone here. So I'm gonna do maybe like, it doesn't make sense to say, yep, I am more expensive. Uh, hey, we are the same, mate, something like that, no? So, and then now I have to challenge myself to write, hey, we are the same, okay? And how would you do that? How would you do that? There's an if here, so there's an else if. Of course, you could just keep else here and then you go do if here. It's the same, but you combine them. Else if price is greater than, I uh, know is less than the price. I am, I am cheaper, and if that doesn't happen as you know as well, then they must be the same. Hey, we are the same, mate. Right? All right. Okay, or you can give it like, you know, yep, same price, but I'm better, you know, I'm prettier, something like that, right? So, then you update your thing, same price, but I'm prettier. So, I encourage you to add like your own personality to the, uh, you know, to the, I think they all should, okay, should have a punctuation there. All right, so you run this, I'm testing with the same price. Right? Sounds good. You can even test it with like a new flower. 
you know, this flower, uh, you don't even have a name, like an empty name, and then you're same price. I don't know, you can even do my flower, not price. Right? This is just challenging yourself to use slightly more complicated, combining all these things together, if you like. Does this statement make sense to you guys? Yes. I agree. Sine? Does this line make sense to you? Ruby doesn't read from left to right like we do. Ruby will go all the way to the end, inside the parentheses. Okay, I have the first string, that is a flower name. I have a uh, my flower dot price, so that's a number. Oh, oops. Did I define a number by no this, this is wrong? I define a flower by by name and, and color though, not price. So not good, not good. I cannot pass the flower price in here. So cannot do that, right? Unless you enhance it even more by adding a price equals nil and then price here. But then you also need to change. I don't need to change anything. That's the magic, price right? Nil. Okay. Because I'm adding the option to have the third argument, but all my previous code used two arguments. Okay. That's okay. See. Make, make you guys like it, it hurts a little bit to think what I've been thinking I only have two arguments now what three and nothing changes nothing breaks that's amazing but in any case so you define the price a little bit lower if that doesn't cover it uh, by the way I think this is what Oscar is saying right you have to change down here so you, this is your color so this is your name there will be another color like you know what color has a what put put Green color, right? Uh, what's the? I don't know. There's some nice color, some 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 green species, and then you know green color. But you do have to pass this price as a third argument, not the second. Okay? Then now I am guaranteed that. Uh oh. I am guaranteed that. What's going on here? Line sixty-five. Let's debug it together. Another flower dot price. Why is my flower without a price? Right, I'm going to show you guys how to debug this. Uh, let's see how we can debug here. Just, we learn more from basically figuring out that what's wrong, right? That's why I keep showing you the errors first. Now, in say comparison of integer with nil fail, line 65. So I go to line 65 and I also look for the error. I am trying to compare a number with nothing. Line 65, I'm comparing price with another dot price. But which one is nil? It doesn't tell me. Right. Because you already have price already. Yeah, it doesn't. I don't. However, I can guess. It's saying comparing integer with nil, probably you know that this integer is a thing in the left. Right? Sometimes I cannot guess, then I should put a put statement in. In line 64 to print them out but in this case I know I know that uh, in this case price exists it's just another the price is nil okay all right all right another price is nil why I have this flower dot new green species green and my flower dot price I think my flower dot price look good right so then I go and look at the new code I add, right? Name, color, price. Oh, did you see I wrote color is nil and the price is nil? What should it be? Price. Thank you very much. So, it's almost like I designed that error so we can learn to troubleshoot. <laughs> Sometimes I pretend so well that I, <laughs> did, I did not even realize that I pretended. But. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, when you type so fast and your brain is like just cruising along, you make this kind of mistake all the time. Okay, we're feeling good with defining new methods, opening up the class. And in this class, I can, I can talk to another object of the same class. Right? Okay. Alright, so with your task 4, it's uh, interesting because now a bouquet is 
now when you start a bouquet, you need to have a few flowers already. Of course, you can always start a bouquet with no flowers. And that's why if you do bouquet up new, flowers here is, is by default. It's this. So you don't even need to uh, pass in any argument. Bouquet up new, you see this here? My bouquet has zero flowers. That sounds good, and then I can add more flowers to it. But because now you understand how a class works, you see how I define everything for you, and you just need to focus on the content, things get easy, right? And you feel really comfortable. So I'm going to, for example, uh, take a look at task four. It will be like this. You paste this content inside. And the beautiful thing, let's say, if you do IRB with this lab, you can already do bouquet.new. It works, right? You can also, you can, you know, let's say do this, right? My bouquet is the uh, above. I, I tend, you know, let's say if I tend to forget that, is the above one. And now my bouquet at flower, right? Oh, I, I need them at flower here, right? And then nothing happens because I never did any code. But at least you just focus on the, the content here, okay? Your job is to add these flowers to the list of flowers. You need to define an attribute, flowers. <laughs> okay, like, so question, Stan. Yes. What are the attributes inside a bouquet class? Yeah, let's. I am. I'm, I'm typing, uh, not person, flower here, right? Okay. If I do flower new, uh, or like it need a few things. Uh, it need two or three arguments. Okay. I have my flower. Look, I have attribute name, color, and price, right? Right now, if I have my bouquet, is bouquet dot new. I have no attributes yet. What, obviously, do you see any attributes? So what attributes should I have? Anyone? Flowers. Lord, you cannot help. <laughs> well, what is a bouquet? Yeah, flowers? well here, it's asking for flowers, right? And you pass it in the flowers. So you're like, okay, what do I need to remember in this bouquet? It's just an array of flowers. So this kind of makes sense. So I give you the code here to just start, you know, writing your bouquet code, right? It will look something like, uh, you know, flowers equal, mm, no, I'm not gonna help, right? So then you go ahead and do it, okay? Uh, and then what is funny is obviously here, the instruction is at total price in bouquet. So you're like, okay, total price, right? I know I have the, the, an array of flowers, I'm just calculating the total price. And remember when you count total, you can always do the old school way, something dot each, here's your something, something dot each, and then here is one flower at a time, right? And you've done that sum, but the sum will be sum is sum plus flower dot price because you remember you implement this already in up, up, upstairs okay and of course sum equals to sum then it's just plus all good something like that but i'm not going to help you with everything then next you start to see that things look scary like milestone b1 is just one damn line right and you, it's just a challenge that hey uh I'm gonna do that right now. Click on this and uh, create a new file. Or you can just, I guess there's a copy somewhere, right? But yeah, I create a new file called lab13b.rb and I copy the code over and I try to make it shorter based on that instruction. Are we good on, on milestone B? Now milestone B2, check this out. Create an item.brb file and define a class item in it. Whoa, holy shit. No more help, no more code to copy. One instruction 
and you have to go and create a new file, right? Class item and right, and that's that's one. That's not too bad. And then in two, it's like define an initialized method that take one argument, the name of the item. Remember how item was used as a hash yesterday? So now you have an item as a as an object of the item class. Right? Yeah. This is in the middle. This is like pushing your brain to hurt a little. And then we will fix that. Like don't make some mistake, right? And then you find all of this. So I, I start to tell you the behavior I expect. And you go and implement that. It's different from what I, you know, give you up here is like the guidance to how to implement things and then warm up the skills to be more comfortable with the class. If you still get to milestone B2 and you're stuck, it's okay, go back and review the previous one. Okay? So if you jump straight and read this, it makes zero sense. That's why when you read the lab, like, I really never expect you to read bottom up. Just do top down. Because it's just building up. And if you get stuck, stay right, right where you're stuck and then wave someone to come over. Like, oh, wait until lecture when I can just show you how to do it. Yeah? yeah. Okay. So please, uh, could I get you guys to finish until milestone 2B? Yeah? So get back to it now and do strive to get to B2, not to B. And milestone C is a little advanced if um, we get the time to do it today. Okay, I don't think we, we do. Um, it's, it's where this is, oh my god, I have all the solution here for you already, and this you cannot face. Don't look at it uh, when you do it, okay? This is a solution, and it kind of show the extra advanced fancy stuff. It's, like, it's appealing, it's like showing you a really nice dish that you can make. But, you know, uh, I'm not asking you to build that, right? So. Today, the okay, maybe those who finish two B two can can try to do it uh, with with milestone C. Right? C does need a little bit of a lecture, but if you just copy exactly what I did, it works too. So, any question? Yeah. Not yet. So do it now, and I'm gonna call two people uh, for like one on one. I was going there and you know just chit chat for a little bit. So when you're doing one-on-one, -on -one, you cannot code, obviously, so. All right, let's get started.